Hey everyone, my name is Gabriel Jones, uh, and I'm one of the level designers for the upcoming Utoy 3671. Um, okay, I think last video I called it Utoy 3671, so uh, I, I am not sure whether it's Utoy or Utoy. Uh, it's kind of up in the air at the moment. Anyway, so the purpose of this video is well, we're gonna try and create another level. So while I was out, I had an idea, an uh, ounce of inspiration, if you will, for a level. And so let me go to my memo here, because uh, usually I just record a memo. Uh, so sometimes it comes out as complete nonsense. So let's see. OK. But, all right, here, here, here it is. Boxers, knock out the pillars beneath you as you try to climb to the goal. Now, you, of course, are Tenten, this um, penguin with the propeller on his head. So, you're trying to climb to the goal, but then there are these boxers, and they're knocking out the pillar that's beneath you, or the pillars. So, start off. Uh, we hit the F5 key and this brings up the boxer menu. And now boxers, uh, you can set, so let's go ahead and uh, get one right here. Uh, you can change what di which direction they punch and how often they punch. The, the lower this number is, uh, the shorter amount of time they wait in between punches. So for now, Let's leave it at 90, and let me just demonstrate him real quick. So there he is right here. So he waits, and then he throws his fist out, and of course, it kills 1010 if it touches him. Uh, but 1010 can jump over the fist and walk on his arm. Uh, he can walk on top of him too. He can make ice blocks on him as well. And now, the other detail about the boxer is as you can see the boxer can punch ice and destroy it. So these pillars are naturally going to be made out of ice. Any other objects um, excuse me, any other objects that the boxer tries to punch will not be destroyed. It's just the ice blocks. So okay. Alright. So, uh, the other de um, the other gimmick, we're going to go ahead and make spikes. So, look at that nice pit of spikes here. Oh, and of course, we should move the goal, like, way up here. We we'll fix it later, but that's the idea. The goal is going to be way up in the center. And then, naturally, we'll go ahead and move 10, 10. And, well, yeah, the spikes do their job by killing 1010, all right? Now, we'll go ahead and move this boxer over here, and we're gonna add uh, some more boxers. Let me bring up the correct menu. All right, there we go. We'll put him over here, and let me see, whoops. We'll do this. We're gonna have another boxer right here, and then one here. All right. Uh, let me just count, because um, I don't know the exact me measurements of the uh, screen, so I usually count the number of blocks to get, like a, you know, try to get um, everything in sync, everything uh, equal, and let's see. Oops. So that is 11. Wait, that is 11? Yeah, that's 11. And 11. Okay, so this is perfect. Now, now of course, 1010 can just stay right here. And he's, you know, of course he can't reach. Well, actually, he could reach the goal. Uh, let me try it right now. So yeah, we can just do this. And 
And yeah, you can just hold the Z key to create bo uh, blocks more quickly. So we just gotta get up here, and there we go. So that's a little too easy, naturally. And it completes, the, and I wanna have pillars and all that fun stuff. So we're gonna take the spikes and, excuse me, 1010, you'll go up there, take all these spikes, and actually we're gonna do this. We're gonna, we're gonna move the boxers all the way to the bottom. And then we are gonna take the spikes and there we are. So, now, let's get our ice blocks so we can make our pillars. And I think starting from here, and, whoops, Ooh, there we are. Hmm, actually, now there are a number of different, excuse me, a number of different directions I could go here. See, I could take, I could erase all these um, blocks, except for just that. And so, see, we just have this narrow, and, oh, okay, that, uh, that uh, completely, uh, yeah, I forgot that, okay, I messed up, uh, let me see, let me see, okay, we'll do this, I think this will work, actually, wait, nope, I gotta, I gotta move everything up now, because I can't have the boxers at the very bottom of the screen. But I guess that works out, because um, I can give the boxers little platforms to sit on, and it doesn't really do anything, it's just aesthetically pleasing, and you know, we're all about aesthetics here. So, uh, let's get our little platforms. Whoop. So there we go, I got a cute little platform for them to sit on. Um, give these two a long platform. Or slightly longer. Whatever. So there is that. Okay, let's test that again. Okay, that works. And see, uh, they're knocking out the blocks from an, uh, underneath Ten Ten, and eventually he's he's going to be stuck. And. Due to the, um, oh, one thing I forgot to point out is that ice blocks are immediately, or ice blocks that Tintin creates are immediately destroyed if they touch spikes. Okay, so. So he can't, he can't create um, more ice blocks to, let's say, reinforce the pillar or make it taller or anything of that sort. So, if I wanted to, I would just have, let's say, something like this. We'll take, actually, we're going to make the pillar, uh, let's, let's make it something like this. And just uh, in the interest of, you know, just trying to show what I'm going for here. So you've got the narrow pillars and the goals right there. So if you're fast enough, you can just go there. That's it. That's the end of the level. But um, I want to do something with a little bit more depth to it. So let's widen the pillars. Keep the spikes. And... guess that'll work. And now, 
Now I have, or Tintin has to make ice blocks in order to reach the goal. So let's try this. Okay, that's a little too easy because notice how the one, yeah. Notice how boxer number four uh, is destroying this pillar, but it's not fast enough to reach this one, of course. So, what I'm thinking is we go with just two pillars and we make it, so we'll do this and maybe something like that. And yeah, let's move these spikes here. Actually, I, I, I guess it doesn't matter anyway. I mean, if you, if 1010 10 falls down here, he, he's dead. There's no way around it. So, so we do something like this. Again, not too difficult. In fact, not really difficult at all, at least by my standards. Of course, I've been making stages for a hundred hours, so... Um, hmm. Okay, I... Sorry, cracking my knuckles here. Um, what can I do to kind of spice this level up a little bit? Uh, I can always add some matches. Matches are always fun. Um, well, let me go ahead and do this. We're going to... We're going to uh, lower the um, punch delay. Oops. Oh, it loops around. Well, that's handy. So at 2.55, the boxer wait, uh, waits the longest amount of time before making a punch. And I think... Um, and I think every single digit counts as a frame. So 60 would be one second. And... Right now, most of them are set to about a second and a half in between punches. So let's remove that delay entirely and see what happens. Alright. We are. And, oh yeah, while we're at it, uh, let's go ahead and add some more blocks on the other side. Because one thing we can do is we can go ahead and make sure I got this right here. Then we'll hit F6, get ourselves a cherry, stick it over here, and let's move the goal. Oh yeah, let's let's do that. And okay, this um, these two uh, these two tiny green platforms. That's just makes it easier for 1010 to jump over the goal so he can try and get the cherry and climb back. Of course, let's see what happens with this setup. Okay, as you can see, the, the boxers are going wild. They're punching the heck out of this pillar. And now, see, now, 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 now I'm sweating a little bit because, all right. Because they're destroying the, um, yeah, it's destroying the ice almost faster than I can create it. Okay, whoops. And, oh, wow. And, yeah, all it takes is, because you, you also have to count for, um, the delay. 
because 1010 create, can't create another ice block until the one he just created touches the ground. So if he miss, if I mess up here, I gotta wait for that block to fall all the way to the bottom, and then, all right. Okay, so I reached the goal finally, but as you can see, I cannot get the cherry without dying horribly. So. So gi giving them no delay at all is uh, a bit much. So, uh, let's, let's give them about half a second. Number two and number four. And then numbers three and one, uh, the other side with the cherry, uh, let's go ahead and give them a, a whole second, okay? Oops. And we'll see how this works. Okay. So the boxers on my on ten ten side throw a punch about every second. Maybe a little less than a second. Okay. And at this point there there's no salvaging this. Because um even as 1010 creates blocks. The, bl the blocks underneath are destroyed, and slowly but steadily, uh, this this side of the pillar is just gone. So, just gotta focus on this. And of course, while I'm trying to do this, as you can see, the other pillars are gone. And that's it. That's game over there. Okay. So this time, let's just uh, don't try anything cute and just try to reach the goal. Well, I'm sorry, not just reach the goal, but also reach the cherry. Uh, now, one thing I should have pointed out earlier is that the way this game is me. The way this game is set up is that uh, there are multiple stages you can play it in a sequence. Sort of, um, you know, like classic puzzle platformers like Bubble Bobble and um, Don Doka Don, stuff like that. So, and also uh, with the fruit, every time you collect a fruit in the stage, even if it's just a cherry, then the very next stage. So let's say you go, you complete once, <clears throat> excuse me, you grab the chair from one stage, then you complete it. So now the next stage, instead of a cherry, there's going to be a banana. And the bananas are worth more points. You grab the banana in that stage, then in the next stage, there'll be an orange. And so on and so forth. So, so, so there's, Definitely an incentive to grab every piece of fruit that you see, because it adds your uh, it adds your score, and after crossing certain thresholds, you're, you'll get extra lives. So, you know, in classic arcade game fashion. So, so as it, as it stands, this this is fine. Okay, you you sort of get the basic idea of how this level works. So you go over here, get the cherry. And yeah, it's pretty standard. So, now, what could we do to, you know, again, spice it up? So, I think one thing we can do is add a couple of matches. So, okay. 
<laughs> now in this scenario, you don't have any time to wait. In fact, well, you don't have any time to wait regardless, because there's a boxer knocking the ground out from under you. But this match, it's, well, you know, gonna just kick you into gear. It's like, get moving, alright? This is... If you don't move, if you don't start doing stuff, you're gonna die. So, let's... Get moving. Do what we did before. And... And here comes that match. Well, that's fine. Now we gotta watch out for the other match. Oh! Mmm. <laughs> okay, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, do this. Alright, I think that works. Whoops. Okay, whoops. Alright, I forgot. Uh, these spikes are not very good at climbing. Well, I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm a little mixed up here. The matches are not very good at climbing over spikes. So, let's go ahead and give it something like this. All right, and while I'm at it, let me go ahead and we'll do two red spikes and two green spikes. Alright, see what happens? Okay. Alright, okay, so this is good so far. The matches, uh, they're moving around, they're doing their you know, engaging in their match antics. And Ten Ten still has to create the ice, climb out of this hole he's in. Alright. Okay. Okay. So that's pretty good, too. All right. So as it stands, we we have a pretty basic uh, level here. It's it, it's come together quite nicely, I would say. I mean, it could be more difficult. It could definitely be more difficult. And well, the thing is, is that there are only so many options to increase the difficulty. Because if I added a bulb, you know, like we showed off in the previous video, you know, if I added a bulb right here. Now the problem is that bulb is also going to be destroying the blocks. Alright, so that's going to make things even more frustrating. this might be workable. I mean, it's, it's a little scary, of course, because if that... Oh! Because, yeah, the, there's the bulb. It's coming back. And I, I didn't really uh, increase its accuracy or anything, so... Oh! Shoot. Alright, come on, leave me alone. That's, that's, that's going to be a pickle, because, like, it's basically just going to take a lot of luck. Okay, or never mind, I should just die there, because I, I was going to try 
and jump from that pillar to the goal, but naturally didn't work out. Um, but this does, uh, this does give me a workable idea. So, let me see. Let's uh, bring up the wire, uh, the bulb menu again. Now, what we can do is, if you set the bulb length to zero, give it a second. Yeah, we set the bulb's length to zero. Now, normally, um, the length determines how long a bulb will wait before it changes direction or moves somewhere. But if you set the link to zero, it doesn't move at all. It will, it will, maybe I should demonstrate that. See, it'll sit completely still. It'll sit completely still, but continue firing bulbs. All right. So again, it, whoops. Serves its purpose, it kills 1010, it's doing its job. Very good. So, let us go ahead and add another bulb. And we'll stick it right here. Yeah. Or, no, let me move it one space over. And, also move that one one space over. Okay, um, let me just move the, the goal, there we go, and this, wait, actually wait, I do not, sorry, I'm, make, I'm making a, a few aesthetic additions, that's all. Most of this stuff doesn't really serve a purpose, it's just to help give this stage more of a, um, a unique look. A visual identity, if you will. Okay. Oh, yeah, before I forget. Let's... Set the length of the green bulb to zero. And let's go ahead and lower the drop so that'll increase the number of bullets it fires. Let's go ahead and kick it down to 90. That'll make it extra exciting, extra punishing. All right. And one thing you'll want to make a note of is the sparks across the top of the screen. Those show, you know, they're visual indicators that show you when the bulb is, you know, when the bulb's going to fire. It's a very handy feature, but if it's too distracting for you, you can disable it. I usually leave it on because it helps, makes things a little bit easier to track. Okay, so that's tricky. That's one thing I just noticed is that um, this bulb right here, because of the, because Ten Ten, he, let's see, he's a um, kind of a big bodied character. So, okay, so I'm, so Ten Ten's st standing here and he's trying to create ice blocks. But, when he tries to do that, he immediately gets zapped. So it makes things a little, a little too frustrating. A little too frustrating. So, we'll move the red bulb over one. And that way he can at least make the blocks he needs without... 
course, he still has to deal with the matches. Whoops. But otherwise, it's it's fair. And I guess that's the hardest part of designing a good level. It's finding the balance. Because you, you want to make a difficult level, but you can't just add a whole bunch of bulbs and matches and a thousand things going on at once. You, it's a give and take. So let's put 1010 back where he belongs. And just, yeah, we'll just move that right there. Again, aesthetics. A lot. There, there's a, a always this feeling of a synchrosity. Syn Synchrosity? Is that it? Synchronization? Anyway, like balance. I, I, I like I like having everything just kind of equal on both ends. It gives it, it gives each stage that visual pop. You know, I mean, kind of triggers that um, that sensors in your brain, whatnot, whatever. I'm just talking nonsense now. Excuse me. All right, let's start this again. So again, whoops. All right. Oh, okay. Let's hurry up and create the block so we can climb out of this mess. Oh, rats. Try again. Because in my head right now, I'm thinking about ways I can make this stage even more difficult while, you know, retaining the fairness, but First, I have to be able to complete it. And generally, I have my own set of rules. Well, my own set of rules when I design a level. If I can complete the level the first time I test it, then it's too easy. And... Okay, that's, that's kind of handy, I guess. Oh, of course it might not be enough. <laughs> Alright, we, we're... We're, we're doing an audible here. We're just doing whatever it takes to try and finish the stage at this point. Because we are not getting that cherry anymore. Oh. Alright. <laughs> okay. So, hmm. That was pretty scary. And because I, I made a couple of critical mistakes early on, I had to scramble just to complete the stage. So that, that works too. G giving players the opportunity to recover from a, a mistake is always a is always good. Like, and re rewarding players that are able to think on their feet, that's nice too. And, Okay, and that, that went a lot more smoothly. Uh, oops. Gotta make those, uh, gotta make those, uh, blocks count. So if I make a block and it falls in the spikes, well, that's just a waste of time. Whoa, okay. Oops. 
Oh, oh, that's that's no good. Yeah, I don't I don't think I was. Yeah, there was no way I was going to recover in time because I just spent a little too long trying to. Hmm. Okay. So, so I completed the stage that last time, uh, but the thing is, I'm going for consistency. I want to be able to. Excuse me, I want to be able to complete this stage multiple times in a row without dying. Oops. Okay. But again, uh, consistent. What where was I? <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm going for consistency. I want to be able to. I want to be able to complete this stage multiple times in a row, at least three. Without dying. Because the way I see it, the player isn't going to be playing just this one stage. They're not, not they're not gonna play one stage and then that's it. Good job. You know. It, like this stage would be just one of many. So they'd have to play this stage plus like 50 more, or they play 50 stages and then they get to this one. And and like I said, it's the whole, the, the Bubble Bobbles, the Don Dokadons, all those classic arcade puzzle platformers where you have to complete, bas yeah, basically complete 50 to 100 stages in a row and you only have three, four, you know, maybe five or six lives at the most to work with. And of course, one hit equals death, so that's another factor to consider. And that's the that's the most difficult part of achieving that perfect balance, because you're not just accounting for this stage, but how it affects every other stage that you create. You can't just create the most difficult stage of all and then just stick it in the middle of the game, because then you know, players are going to be worn down just from trying to complete this stage that they won't be able to progress any further. And that's when the frustration sets in. So, it, it, it's complicated. It, it is complicated. And I, I really have to hand it to the creators of these kinds of games who have to account for just these endless possibilities. And... Okay, uh, let's go ahead and test the level again. We are got. I think. Wow. <laughs> it's like I, I got I got I beat the stage once, and I'm like I, I got to beat it two more times, right? Two more times without dying, and I immediately goof up. And the thing is, too, is that if all you're doing is going for the goal, this stage actually isn't all that difficult. And if you move fast enough, you can reach the goal without having to deal with all these matches and the sparks and everything else. So, like, uh, I'll just demonstrate real quick. Whoops. Okay, and see, just like that, I've already reached the goal, didn't have to stress too much. Where most of the difficulty comes in, it's from getting that cherry. So, essentially, I could put this stage closer to the beginning of, say, the game, or like, you know, if I, if I had like 50 stages, I would make this maybe like a stage 8 or stage 9. All right, now let's make it like a stage 15. And if all the player did was go for the goal, then it wouldn't be that difficult. Especially if they knew the mechanics of the game and understood the controls well enough. And, you know, got a lot of practice. 
but placing that cherry there, um, actually, you know what? A cherry simply isn't good enough. Considering how much extra work it is to get to this fruit, uh, let's. I think it deserves a strawberry. If you can get here, if you can get to the strawberry and get to the goal, well, you deserve, you know, that special, ex, you know. Like that, that is a special treat worthy of a skilled player like yourself. So let us try to get that strawberry. Again, without dying horribly. Without wasting, wasting blocks. You know. And of course, I also have to consider that difficulty is relative. For someone like myself, who has, I don't know, 120-ish, 120-something hours in this game, um, I'm sorry, I, I have to check. <laughs> okay, yes, 121 hours of playtime spent you know, playing the game, designing levels, stuff like that. Um, what might be easy for me is most likely going to be a lot difficult for somebody who just started the game. So that's another factor to, to, to consider. And I think if I wanted to make this level even easier, I would give, let's see, or I, actually not just even easier, but just say easier for players who are newer at the game, I would just, I would add this I would I would do this yeah I would make extra wide pillars but I don't I don't think that's necessary because th this I think this would at least be a seven the difficulty or my personal rating my personal difficulty rating that would be at least a seven um, for those who are new to the game well it would definitely be closer to a nine so so if I if I had 50 stages 50 levels excuse me I would make this maybe like a level 40 somewhere in the level 40 to 50 range maybe 30 to 35 35 to 40 somewhere in that range definitely on the higher end just because actually no Maybe not. Maybe, maybe I drop this down to the 15s or 20s, just because, again, it's easy to reach the goal. The hard part is getting the strawberry, getting back to the goal, without dying, of course. So, okay. I actually like, I actually like this level. This is, um, this is a pretty decent one. I don't want to toot my own horn here or anything, but this isn't bad. This is uh, exactly what I envisioned, and, it, and it's definitely come together. So let us, oh look, there it is, difficulty seven. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I did not set that on purpose. Oh well, uh, let's decide on a background. Hmm. I like the blue. I mean, there's already a little bit of blue in this level with all the ice blocks and everything. So let's go with that. That's a nice visual aesthetic here. And let's give it another run. Whoops. <laughs> Rats. Okay. Yeah, one thing you can do is, um, yeah, you can drop ice blocks just like that on, on the matches, and that'll send them back where they came. So it's a, it's a good temporary measure just to get them out of your hair, or your propeller, or your propeller. Oh, 
Well, okay. And one of the handy, just it's sort of a subtle feature, but it's extremely handy, is that uh, when you press the, the Z key to create a block, Tencent sort of locks in a place. It's kind of hard to explain. He sort of... It's done to keep him from like falling off of a cliff or something like that. Actually, here, it would probably be easier if I um, did a quick little demonstration. I'll take, I'll just do this. And I think this was, um, I think the developer, uh, he got the idea from Solomon's Key, if you're familiar with that game. So, Again, it's very subtle, but you notice how 1010 just immediately just sort of positions himself like that. Because I all I did was press the Z key. I didn't I didn't uh, press the arrow key or anything. I just tap. I well, I tapped the arrow key just a little bit, just a slight touch, and then. I hit the Z key, and it moves the rest of the way. Again, it just sort of locks Tenten into the proper place, so he can, you know, create whatever he needs to create to... Alright. Again, it's a very subtle change. It's not something you'll notice at first, but you're, you'll be extremely glad it's there, because it's going to keep you from sliding off of cliffs or accidentally creating a block and sending yourself flying over the edge. Well, not not like zoom, like like soaring over the edge or anything, but you, it, it's such a minute difference in a game where life and death is often just a centimeter away. So, I know, not the best explanation, but when you play the game, you'll realize just all, like, how much these little details matter, because it'll keep 1010 alive, and hopefully makes for an enjoyable game. Alright, let me drop you there. Actually, wait, no, I wanted him right here. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and complete the stage one more time. But I think as it is, it's perfect. Now, there are ways I could make it even more difficult. As I mentioned before, I could have the the bulbs. I, I could increase their rate of fire. And I could add even more matches. But I think that would just get ridiculous. I already have to deal with at least two in each section of the stage. But, whoops. Yeah, one other thing to consider. Um, ooh, ouch. That stinks. Okay, but... Um, one other thing to consider is that if a block is destroyed out from underneath you, it can affect your ability to jump. So you, you have to, whoops, like right there, you, you, you have to account for that sort of thing. And you also have to account for that too, damn it. Oh, yeah, right.
some sometimes it, it just all, all those times I, I get zapped like in the, the corner of uh, now that that was just a big mistake. Again, I'd still keep. Wow. <laughs> Crud. I am just messing up big time here. Uh, but um, again, I'm gonna keep the difficulty about a seven. Going for the strawberry would definitely kick it up the higher, and it would probably be more difficult for players of different like skill levels, experience sets. Millions of other factors to account for. Okay. Got through the, the worst of it. Uh, I just gotta... There we are. Alright. I think that's it. I think that is the level. That is definitely it. It's... I think it's good enough as is, so now I should come up with a name. Uh, <clears throat> hmm. Uh, let's... There we go. Crumbling Boxers. Okay, it, you have boxers... The ground is crumbling out from underneath you. It's it's a name. Does the job. Okay. Alright. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it. Uh, thanks for watching, and yeah, have a good one. We'll try and uh, tackle well uh I'll do another video when I have another idea for a level. Next time I want to um, do something with cannons. Cannons are another obstacle in Utoy 3671. So look forward to that. And again, thank you for watching. Take care.